So I think that's where that team approach really does come in, like working with an athletic trainer, chiropractor, general practitioner, you know, whoever they're seeing working as a team to say, all right, let's combat this together with this athlete so that we can get her on track. All right, welcome back to the Pure Playbook. I am Dr. Dustin Boston with the athletic trainer herself, Erin Rajiri. Super excited to have uh, another guest podcast going out. Um, we're here with Caitlin McNally, which we are super grateful for. Um, and this is going to be a great one talking about uh, nutrition, yeah. uh, dietetics, as she is an RD. I'll let her, her tell her story here in just a second. But just as a reminder, we're always trying to link resources for parents and student athletes. The biggest thing that we find is in this space is, is athletes are being, or they're just different nowadays, yeah. the way they're growing, the way they're developing. Um, so we just want to create a, a platform and, and for them to be able to ask better questions, get better answers, but bridge the gap to who do we trust? Where the hell do we go? How do we find it? Mm -hmm. What's out there? Um, as we do see some high level athletes that um, are just doing big things that deserve better yeah. health and yeah. more resources. So uh, the three pillars we always work on that we talk about are physical, mental, and relationships. We're going to cover a lot of that today. So without further ado, I'm just going to introduce Caitlin here and, and let her tell us a little bit of her background and, and where she comes from, where she grew up, all the good things so we can get to know her a little better or so you guys can get to know her a little better. Make sure you subscribe. Leave us some uh, questions in the comments if you have any. Uh, share it out. We'd love to be a resource for you as we continue to uh, dive deeper and build this flat platform. Yeah. So uh, welcome, Caitlin. Thanks for coming on. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here and talk with you guys today. Awesome. So, uh, yeah. Tell us a little my, about yourself. Yeah. Just go. Yes. My right spiel. In. So uh, my name is Caitlin McNally. I am a registered dietitian, strength coach wife, and I have, and a mom, I have a young son, so not quite in the sports world yet, but he's getting a lot of exposure. Uh -huh. And um, my business is youth sports nutrition and how this really came about is as I was exploring um, after I became a dietitian, exploring the world of sports nutrition and sports performance, I started thinking back to my high school days as a volleyball and softball athlete, started realizing that there was a lack of resources when I was an athlete for nutrition information. Absolutely. And I was really reflecting on like, okay, you know, 10 years ago, like, what was I eating before a game? Right. What was I eating before practice? And it is nothing that I recommend. To my yeah. It's like, it's kind of scary to think about. <laughs> right. So I was like, I want to provide those resources and I want to be the expert to high schoolers and youth athletes. So that's really where my passion started was, um, like five to eight years ago, really wanted and dove into the high school setting. So I've worked with a lot of teams throughout my career and I've done some moving around. So I am originally from Detroit, Michigan. I went to Michigan state for dietetics and then I moved on to the university at Buffalo in Buffalo, New York, and did my dietetic internship and master's in clinical nutrition. You just enjoy and at cold, don't you? What? You just enjoy being cold, don't you? Detroit, I know, Buffalo, I know. Stay on the lake. Yes. Well, it's funny because now that I'm in Kansas, I'm like, I don't think I can move back to the <laughs> north. Like, <laughs> I, I'm like very much enjoying this weather right now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, um, to, dude. I was just like, holy cow, that's a lot of that's a lot of lake. A lot lake of parka. Effect. Yeah, a lot of parka life. <laughs> yes, with lots of snow, lots of cold, lots of wind. So for like half of the year. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, and then when I was at the university at Buffalo, um, that's when I was exposed to sports 
nutrition at the college level. And it was just such a great opportunity. I was doing team talks, grocery store tours, nutrition counseling and coaching. And we were able to do, um, like bod pod testing as well. We had that resource at the university and looking at, um, body mass index and body fat and muscle mass and all the things at like more of a clinical level. So it was a really awesome opportunity, but I just didn't feel the pull to go into college athletics. Um, and at the time, um, my now husband is a football strength coach at the D one level. So that is what brought us to Kansas. And it's so great because, um, this, my practice is virtual. I meet with a lot of clients virtually and then wherever I'm at, I can kind of connect with local schools, local high schools and local teams too. So, um, I, I did a lot when I was at the, when I was in Buffalo, New York, worked with a lot of private facilities, worked with the, um, I actually ended up working with like USA hockey had a camp that came into town, worked with that, did some, um, high school nutrition talks with them. Um, the national women's hockey league, they had just started their first season and we were able to do nutrition talks with them. And that was really exciting. So, um, I got, I ended up getting a lot of experience when I was there and now just building my practice, doing one-on-one coaching, nutrition team talks or group talks. And I have an online nutrition course that self pace that is really geared toward the youth athlete, as well as like a parent or a coach who's interested in learning more about nutrition. So in, in that course, particularly what, uh, mm-hmm. what, what age range, like how low are, are you like when you talk ideal clientele, you say a lot about the high school level, but how, what's the age range you're really, really looking for? Yeah, I've definitely tested out and I've worked with some clients as young as like 10 and 11. And I will say it's, um, I always include the parents Mm -hmm. during those sessions, um, especially since they are fairly young, but I would say really starting in like seventh and eighth grade level, like 13, 14 is just really when they start grasping the idea of it and they can kind of start planning on their own. And a lot of times we'll include parents in sessions for sometimes, but sometimes I'm just like, I end the session with, okay, what items on, are you going to tell your parent to add to your grocery (laughs) list? Like (laughs) just the age range though is is so important too, because there's a lot going on in the body. They hit puberty, the the hormone cycles change, the the concentration of those hormones, growth hormone, um, all of those conversations. It is, it is huge. I mean, our practice Mm -hmm. right now, we're probably 50, 50, uh, 50, 50, as far as general you know, we've got a great family practice, um, but a lot of that family does have athletes. So we're about 50, 50 Mm -hmm. student athletes from 10 to 22. Yeah. Uh, Mm -hmm. And this is such a need and they are wanting more, but uh, that is a a great age to, to really start diving in and that understanding what, what is going on? How do I feel myself, especially on track to be an elite level athlete. Yeah. And especially at that age too, their parents have to really be involved because they're the ones who are driving them places and getting their food and hopefully (laughs) maybe could, yeah, buying the food and probably cooking the food. Yeah. Um, so yeah, my, my, and my whole background too. And it's super cool that, you know, you've gone this route. My, my cousin Brianna actually went to university in Nevada, Reno. She's also just received her RD as well. And, uh, so it's, it's very important, but my whole background in biochemistry, genetics, and then going into, uh, the chiropractic space, not from an injury standpoint or, or lower back pain, like it's such a, on a performance level, it's a big part of what we like to talk about as far as the chiropractic lifestyle, um, and the pure athlete evaluation that we come up with. It's like, what do you eat? Are you tracking anything? And if not, that's fine. We just come more from the perspective of what do you know? What do you not know? What do you care to know? And then clinically, here's what we're going to add to it. And providing resources like you and in, 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 in this and nutrition is just so huge. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And a lot of times when I am working with clients and high school athletes, you know, we're doing some I don't want to say basic, Mm -hmm. but it's a lot of education, right? Like, so we're teaching, okay, this is what, this is what macronutrients are. This Mm -hmm. is what a carbohydrate is. 
this is how it fuels your body and is helpful to performance. You know, we're, I'm doing a lot of education and I think that's where my online course is actually really beneficial because it provides them with a baseline and then they can take, and then I help them create, you know, learn how to create their own fuel plan and, um, which is awesome. But, you know, sometimes athletes do need like a little bit more one-on-one hand holding, um, and things like that, especially when they're going through the puberty stages. Mm-hmm. And, um, when I am working one-on-one, I mean, that's like a huge topic of conversation is like, where are you at within puberty? Yeah. Like, are you done? If you're done with puberty, great. Like, let's, you know, right. let's start accomplishing those goals. Yeah. Like if you aren't like may need, like, especially for male athletes, like you may not be gaining weight anytime soon. Yeah. Right. Like, mm-hmm. so, um, your goals may need to just be on pause for a little bit, you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, definitely all of those questions within like growth and development are like really crucial, um, for both males and females. We know with females, as they're entering the puberty stage, we're focusing on bone health and iron levels and, um, you know, more of that, biochemical mm-hmm. dinner <laughs> oh, yeah. um, piece of it. So that's one of the questions we ask all the time. And yeah. I, I kind of preface it. I, I don't know if I, I do, especially it's, e- it's easier when Aaron's in the room. Yeah. I've gotten over it recently, but even with my young student athletes, we just had um, two girls under 14 start. And one of the biggest questions I ask is, do you have your cycle yet? Mm-hmm. Uh, because it is, yeah. uh, it is a big, you know, again, going back to the biochemistry background and the metabolic background is it's like those there's cascades that change, um, with that. So that is such an important question that we do ask too, and that everybody should know whether you are a doctor clinician or, you know, a, a dietitian or, you know, even mm-hmm. a, even a coach that has maybe an elite level athlete. And it's like, man, I just, you know, I need her to, yeah. is there, you, we just gotta get some weight on her. And it's like, okay, well, mm-hmm. I totally understand, but it looks different yeah. depending on where they're yeah. at in that developmental stage. Yeah, for sure. Well, and even adding a follow-up question of, do you have it regularly? Yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> that's the next one. <laughs> right. Like right, that thing. initial question, do you have it? Okay, great. Do, are you getting it every you know 28 days? Yeah. Right. <laughs> like, and I mean, I'm, I, I'm, you know, I do see athletes who aren't mm-hmm. getting right. it. And like, that's, you know, that's those athletes I'm doing a lot more of like, okay, we're meeting on a weekly basis. Yeah. yeah. Like it, verse, you know, every other week and then doing touch, you know, and then just right. like touching base. Right. During. And that's, and mm-hmm. that's one thing I try not to fall. I, I try not to let anybody fall victim to a diagnosis. Like there's a time and right. place for those things. And where I'm going with that is, and, and you might agree with this and we can talk, I, I do want to talk about this. Yeah. I kind of want to dive deep onto this and we're going to stay on the female side of things. Um, males present a little differently with this, but, um, everybody's like, oh, well, she's a high level athlete. You know, she, you know, it's once every two or three months, or, you know, we have a 15 year old who doesn't have it yet. Right. And it's like, there's more going on there. Female yeah. athlete try is not why oh, that yeah. is and it's it's a very real thing like the symptoms equal the 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 name brand of of that diagnosis it's like because you have the symptoms it qualifies to be called this mm-hmm. however this is one of the things that we talk about with our clients whether it's general practice or our athletes or whatever it might be is i never want them to fall victim to being told of what it is and I right. tell them that and they're like, yeah, I was like, you've probably been told what, oh, it's IBS. Oh, it's female athlete triad. Oh, it's this. It's what, what, what we, and I think you're on the same page of this and you're going to agree is why, if we yep. can figure out the why and figure out the source, if there's something underlying, I have a whole metabolic program a blood work where we do six or seven pages of tests and metabolically, mm-hmm. there could be things in there that also aren't triggering high level athletes, especially young, young females. Um, there could be more going on there that mm-hmm. then clinically we need to discuss. Not that it's anything scary. It's right. happened. It's common. It's not normal. There's a difference I there, say that. but I, that's a huge thing is it's like, okay. So anybody listening, if, if you've had the female athlete triad thrown at you, or maybe it looks like you're going through that, just know, let's figure out why, because you've been told what and cool, you have some sort of information, mm-hmm. but now let's find why. Mm-hmm. And that's where the team approach is so important, right? Like, and, you know, and I can't technically diagnose Mm -hmm. and I can't technically, you know, in my profession, I can't technically diagnose or, you know, I can read 
blood yeah. panel levels, right? And I can identify if it, they're low, but I can't diagnose, oh, she's iron deficient. Yeah. Or yeah. so I think that's where that team approach really does come in. Like working with an athletic trainer, chiropractor, a general practitioner, you know, whoever they're seeing, working as a team to say, all right, let's combat this together with this athlete so that we can get her on track. And also, you know, we don't want to, I never want to use the scare tactic with athletes, but in the back of my head, I'm just like, oh no, this can really affect adult life, yes. Absolutely. you yes. know? And so, you know, just trying to emphasize the importance of kind of tackling it and working together to address it earlier on than waiting. Yeah. And this is exactly why it's great to have people like you in our corner. And, you know, if we, if we, you know, continue to develop a relationship where, um, you know, me being, you know, able to go through some of that, like you said, but mm -hmm. on the flip side is it's like, you know, if we find that first and then there's more things, they need a little more hand holding. Mm -hmm. They need a little more like, are those things that I can do? Yes. Those mm -hmm. are things that I can do. Uh, Aaron being on the athletic training side, she can find those things, bring them to me. I can confirm, put a stamp on it. Here's what it is we need to do. Yeah. But then I, now I have somebody like, could I do and manage a lot of that? Yes, I can. But it's like, let's just give them another resource because I can't mm -hmm. spend all of my time. I mean, of the 50, 60 athletes we're seeing now, yeah. if I had half of them come to me and I had to manage all that, it's like, no, this is why I want everybody to know. Mm -hmm. And you, a lot of you have seen the, the, um, the resources we put in here, the guests that we've had, it's because we truly want to collaborate to make our yeah. lives easier, but a great team effect to be able to fuel them and, and build them better. Right. And I feel like we also are coming together as in one common goal and that goal is uh, for the athlete, mm -hmm. 100%. right? It's for well, them. Like, <laughs> so, and then, so now getting away from that, I hope everybody kind of takes something for that. So those <laughs> you young women and, and parents of young women and, and even younger girls, uh, very important, but let's kind of move into, this is, this is something we've talked about on podcasts a couple of times too. And, and clinically what we think of is there is so many different ways, uh, I, you know, from some of the university athletes that I see here that need to put on weight. Yeah. And then they're mm -hmm. like, oh man. And like all their coach says, and I think this dynamic needs to change. It may be an unpopular opinion. I don't think anybody's doing anything wrong, but I mm -hmm. think they need to have resources for them because I have a lot of, um, say football athletes that are like, well, you got to put on 20 pounds before the season. Mm -hmm. They're at home making milkshakes with Oreos and syrup, just trying to pile on calories oh. just to put on the weight. And it's like, yeah. cow, well, path of least resistance is sugar. So as you go burn 2,800 calories in the morning, doing your lifts and runs, it's like, boom, those calories are now gone. Right. Um, but how do we put that on efficiently? And also what, so what sport do you play? And then within mm -hmm. that sport, we had a, a softball coach on um, yesterday. We just recorded another one. So I don't know the timing of when these will come out, but we talked about, okay, if you're feeling a catcher versus mm -hmm. pitcher versus a middle infielder versus a center fielder, it's like, what positions do they play? Are they an aerobic, yeah. anaerobic exercise? How much is there's an, even on the same team, there's so many different dynamics on what you need to eat macro micro wise versus the position you play to be the most mm -hmm. effective performance wise. Yeah. And then on the flip side, there's the artistic athletes uh, that are being told to lose weight and tone up and you yeah. won't make it if you're not the skinniest person in the room. So there's two flips of the coin that are not dealt with properly at all. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I'd love to hear what you have to say about that. <laughs> I did. I have a football athlete, a high school football athlete right now who's looking to gain weight yep. and he's a junior. So hasn't signed anywhere yet, but looking at it and he was waking up in the middle of the night and having a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And I'm like, like, aren't you tired? <laughs> <laughs> he's like asleep. Like, oh. I know. <laughs> yeah. But I'm like, I think that you should prioritize your sleep. Right. Like we'll e eat the peanut butter jelly sandwich another time. Like <laughs> in the wake hours. <laughs> you know, I was like that is dedication. Yes. Like, but let's move that dedication during the, you know, the time yeah. you're awake. Right. Like, so, so kind of give us your, your thoughts on that. I mean, as, or, or even a, just a couple simple takeaways that, you know, yeah. as about what sport are you playing? Not even so much mm -hmm. male or female. I mean, looking from soccer, right. very much more aerobic mm -hmm. versus, mm -hmm. um, you know, something like baseball, very much anaerobic, um, kind of discuss the differences 
that you kind of go through on your clinical side? Yeah. So another question that I always ask is which season are you in? Are you in season? Are you preparing for season? Are you in the post season or, you know, what, what are you focusing on? <laughs> what, what are you focusing on right now? Right? Like, cause a, a pitcher, if you're not in season, like you're probably putting a lot of hours in, right. you know, pitching and strength training and doing like other things. So we still want to take that into account as well. Like, mm -hmm. um, the, football athlete I mentioned, like in the off season, he was, um, strength training in the morning at school. He was getting in some extra hours in the weight room after school, like either cardio or some more weight, and then going to run plays on the field. And I'm like, and you want to gain weight. And right, I'm just right. like, that's awesome. You know, but let's kind of like figure out you know, where that energy expenditure is and where we can get the calories in. So yeah, definitely asking, you know, obviously sport. And then, you know, you also have the multi-sport athletes, mm -hmm. which is a little challenging because it's like, you're almost constantly in season, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then travel ball. Oh my gosh. It's like, oh, yeah. there's everything. There's these so days, many right? things for them to do. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. I actually was talking to a, a high school basketball coach and she's like, Oh yeah. Club tryouts are this weekend and they hadn't even finished high school yeah, yet. It all overlapped. It's crazy. I yeah. know. So I'm like, ah, um, but in general, what my first, once I do a full assessment, I'm kind of like where they're at, what their goals are, what position they play. Um, I do reference the athletes plate, um, which is from the United States Olympic committee and they developed a visual that is for athletes and they divide it up into easy, moderate and hard training. So that is what I start with, depending on what their goals are. If they're, um, you know, really trying to edit, or change their body composition. Maybe we're looking at, um, or like weight management. Maybe we're looking at the moderate training plate. And if they're looking at gaining weight, looking at that hard training plate. So with these, and that's kind of like my baseline, right? Mm -hmm. And with these training plates, why I like the visuals because high school athletes get it right. Like they can see it and they can make, make it into a, a plate mm -hmm. on their own. I mean, but then sometimes there's like, okay, if you go to Chipotle, it's in a bowl, like, how does that work? Right. So I work through that education right. with them, but what's great about that is they see how the portion sizes of each macronutrient changes. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, even with weight gain, we're not all just crunching carbohydrates, right? Yeah. Like there's still protein involved. You still need your micronutrients from fruits and vegetables. Like, um, you know, but your ha your fat content throughout the day is going to be a little bit larger. Right? right. So the plates provide a really good visual to start with. And then, um, just doing a full assessment with athletes of their, daily diet, like what it looks like breakfast, lunch, dinner, their snacks throughout the day. Um, and trying to just do a full assessment and high school athletes are very hard, mm -hmm. um, to work with because their lunch times are different every day. Yeah. And they, you know, they're, they get stuck on that or some, um, uh, teachers don't allow snacks in the classroom. That is a barrier. Um, practices and games are during a typical dinner time. You know, how are we navigating that? I actually just right. did a social media post about that, but you know, I mean, they have all these challenges in terms of time. So, you know, trying to look at when they can eat following the plate that's appropriate for them. And then also really just trying to surround their workouts with quality nutrition. So making sure they're getting some um, you know, a meal a couple hours before their workout, making sure you're getting some simple carbs directly before their workout, and then still having a solid recovery plan that includes carbohydrates and protein, no matter what time the practice ends, yeah. you know, practice competition, whatever it is. So, you know, it's kind of like, oh my gosh, my, every time I work with an athlete, I'm like, oh, where do I start? You know, yeah. like, but just trying to work one-on-one -on -one with them is like, okay, what are barriers that you're experiencing? Like, 
Are you having difficulty getting up and eating breakfast in the morning? Okay. What are some like meal prep options we can do or things that you can just throw in the toaster microwave or something like that? Like, okay, let's get them just starting to eat breakfast because that's their barrier right now. So trying to work through specific barriers through each of our sessions too, that then work toward that goal. Yeah. And here's one thing I want everybody to know as we kind of continue to move through this is then, cause we're, we're very quickly, you know, then it's like, oh, I can just have a shake in the morning. Mm. Uh, but here's what I want people to know before we have that discussion. Well, yeah, given times, you know, there, there's times where that is definitely an asset, but here's what I want everybody to know is supplementation is never in place of food calories. Like, yes, yes, there's time to supplement, but most of your calories, like you can't have four shakes a day. You can't take, you know, all of the supplements in the world to, you know, to, to get what you need. In. Right. So please nobody think that, you know, you should, you shouldn't have even 50, 50 supplementation in my mm-hmm. opinion. Um, so don't think supplementation is a replacement for food. So. I just wanted to get that out because then it's like, okay, then what do we, um, you know, we can, one thing I do want to talk about that I think are a couple high ticket items as far as education is, um, you know, oh, I have a handful of gummy bears after I lift and because they see all the cool stuff, right? A lot of the the, oh. the Instagram stuff and it's like, <laughs> oh yeah, eat Skittles afterwards. It replenishes yes. your glycogen and yes. it's like, okay, there's science to that. Yes, but you're missing the whole entire story or, um, or you've got a, you know, you've got a, anaerobic team, which means you're not using a lot of oxygen. You know, you're not going into the aerobic stage where oxygen is very, very dependent on what you do, like a soccer player. And it's mm-hmm. like, oh, let's carb load before the game. Oh. It's like, so that's another conversation. Yeah. And I think we should jump yeah. into that real quick. Yeah, that's Just from a go. foundational level is Stop reading my mind, <laughs> which where do, you, where do you want to go first? The carb loading. I was going to bring okay. that up. Yeah. Oh, the oh, I was going to choose supplements. Darn. <laughs> Just because, especially since we have an athletic trainer on. Like, Either oh. one. She's very much like a, we both, just so everybody knows, they've, those of you to watch have caught this, but so you know too, we're very much not cliche and status quo. Yeah. Like our goal, especially like I've got a, like our sign that used to hang outside said vital performance chiropractic. Well, I took the chiropractic off of the outside sign and it hangs in here in our office because I'm removing all stereotypes. Because mm-hmm. a lot of people, a lot of our athletes that come in here and they come in and they see the huge sign in the back that still lights up and it says chiropractic, like, wait, this is a chiropractic office. I had no idea. I'm like, bingo. So we're yeah. very much like not status quo because yeah. we do mm-hmm. have a lot of, and she has a great following of, of athletic trainers that do ask her questions because people are starting to wonder more on the supplementation side. Mm-hmm. So before yeah. we go there, yeah, that's why it's, it's funny. You would think she would talk supplements, but it's like, let's talk mm-hmm. about the carb load. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I love it. I love it. I mean, okay. So I will say I'm like a little biased because, uh, by nature, I'm an endurance athlete. So like, I'm all about the carb loading yep. and, uh, but I mean, it's, there, there's a science to it yeah. too. Like people think that they're just like, Oh, I'm going to eat as many carbs as I want. Like right. three days leading up to competition. And you're like, then you get full or then you get constipated. And it's mm-hmm. like, uh, there's like a science to it, but yeah, I mean, as of right now, we're not in doing a lot of carb loading or not really recommending a lot of carb loading to athletes just because of the way their practice schedules are. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, occasionally like soccer they they have a tournament on a weekend. And so I'd probably recommend, you know, right. a little bit of car, you know, some carb loading leading up to, um, to their tournament, but not talking a lot about it. Um, right. with athletes we're more focused on, what you're eating throughout the day, making sure you're getting even enough calories in, you know, um, you know, how it could change, how your nutrition can change depending on the season you're in. Um, you know, like right now I'm talking with an athlete who, um, we, he met his weight goal. Um, and then he leaves in end of May, June for, um, college football. And I'm just like trying to just do as much education as possible of like how his nutrition may change Mm -hmm. to what it is now, like what it's going to look like in June and July when it's more strength focused versus August when you're going to be doing two a days and, you know, things like that. So where I'm just not talking as much about, um, carb loading, um, and, a lot of times the cross country athletes feel the need to carb load. And, um, I don't know if you 
Yeah, I'm sure you guys have seen their times, but they're like <laughs> 16 minutes. And I'm right. like, I don't really know if you need, I don't really know if you need to carb load for that. Um, you know, we want adequate carbohydrates leading up to competition, but the idea of carb loading is so much more when, um, you're a half marathon runner, um, triathlete marathon, you know, those really long distance, um, sports and competition. Yeah, I was so gonna, I was going to say, I was like, give us, um, because carb loading is just that it's, it's a buzzword, right? It's like, mm-hmm. all so it's like in a lot of these in, in parents at no fault of your own right. at all. It's like, oh man, it's like during football season, particular, like they'll go rent out a space at the olive garden with the, all you can eat pasta. And these kids are just pounding. It's like, oh, I've got a carb load. So it is a high ticket word, Yeah, but yeah. I'll tell you what, give us, if you can, I'm going to put you on the spot here. Give us the best case for you what people it. think carb loading is and what the, the buzz is about sitting down at Olive Garden before a game and just pounding three bowls of pasta. What is the ideal scenario for when that is necessary? So I always recommend carb loading when an event is over three hours, like consistently. So think of a half marathon, um, you know, most, um, athletes, runners can finish between like two hours and two hours and 30 minutes, mm-hmm. but you're constant. Right. Right. So on and off the field and on the, you're bed. not going on and off the field. I mean, I do think that there is obviously I think there's some merit to making sure you're having adequate carbs leading up to okay. competition. But the idea of carb loading is really spending three days prior to competition and almost doubling your carbohydrate intake. And that a lot of times where I'm, I don't work with a lot of high level endurance athletes, but just from my own personal experience, like you're using liquids, you're using convenience products to get you to that carbohydrate level. Mm -hmm. Um, our glycogen stores do deplete after two hours of constant work. So, um, when it comes to like a football or a soccer athlete, when they, or I mean, rugby too, lacrosse, hockey, they are very constant. It's a very high demand sport. Mm -hmm. Um, so really making sure I don't necessarily, I mean, hockey, they're expending so much energy and they have all the equipment as well. Mm -hmm. Um, so maybe some carbohydrate loading, especially to athletes who tend to lose a lot of weight during that competition, you know, really assessing that and how they're feeling during that competition. How many breaks are they getting? Are they utilizing in between periods or halves to um, replenish? Like kind of talking about all of that and assessing whether or not an athlete needs to carbohydrate load. So those are kind of the sports that stick out to me the most right Mm -hmm. now that it would almost be on an individual level to see like where they're at. Like if an athlete's losing... 10, 13 pounds during a competition. Right. Yeah. Okay. We need to do something different, you know, and maybe that is doing some carbohydrate loading and making sure their electrolytes are on point and, you know, like all of that. But I haven't seen like a lot of athletes that have needed it. And that's I don't a good know. Point you bring up too, because like, so on the, on the weekends, like I, I, I race on the weekend, so I'm in a race car. It could be like during the middle of summer, it's, you know, a hundred, hundred degrees and it's 140 yeah. in the race car. And I'm out there for anywhere from 15 to, to 35 minutes or wow. whatever. It is. But you know, even some of my NASCAR buddies, they're like, I mean, they're in the car, they're running 500 miles a day and they're in Phoenix. And it's like, mm-hmm. I think it's important to also know while there is any energy expenditure, it's like, okay, there's a difference between the marathon athlete physically using every piece of their body. And then the athlete who's in the race car, who's very much an athlete, don't get it confused. Yeah very much an athlete. All of you need to Uh know they are very much an athlete, but the loss of weight is for different reasons. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, okay, how much water loss are they using? And, you know, marathoners are going to lose, but it's like, but they're using every piece of their body the whole time. And how does that look different? Right. Um, but let me ask you this. If say baseball player, what would be, Give us some, give us some of the reasons why, if you're like, I, I don't baseball, the, 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 the 
cliche of carb loading in baseball is just, I, I would just kind of throw that out because if you, I want to know what you think on the back end of like, okay, if you do carb load, here's why, here's why you don't like, here's why you don't want to do that. Yeah. Because if you do carb load and it's not, not necessary, what are some things that they're going to find and notice on the nutrition side that would almost, if not hinder them, but why it wouldn't be necessary? Yeah, I think with carb load, I mean, there's not necessarily like, I mean, there are, ne there could be negative effects. You know, we know that unused um, carbohydrates do turn into, um, do turn into fat, right? But, you know, the idea of the carb loading is really to um, fill up those glycogen stores, right? Like think of it as a gas tank. Like the goal of carb loading is to fill it up to the max mm -hmm. and so that you're ready for competition. Now, you know, what happens to the unused glycogen stores, you know, that's where you could get into those negative effects, but you know, it's okay. Are you going to use it? Like, I mean, most time athletes are going to use it to some extent, but they're not going to be like, if it's an athlete that doesn't need to carb load, they're not going to be like depleting them, depleting that glycogen store, that gas tank, and then seeing adverse reactions either. So, you know, I mean, we could see weight gain over time, right? Sure. If you're constantly, especially in a, a baseball player who is maybe having, you know, a couple games during the week, a series on the weekend, right? And you're constantly carb loading. We could and not using those carbohydrates. You know, we will see some weight gain, a shift in that body composition. Um, and depending on the athlete, maybe, you know, it's a shift in higher fat composition versus muscle mass. Um, but I know like at the college level, at least they do really well with working with athletes that aren't, um, as involved in the game, they work a lot with them off field and making sure they're maintaining muscle mass or, you know, and making sure that they're still on track for performance, even during, um, the, even during in season. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, like you said, I mean, the adverse um, effects of just constant carb loading, especially if it's, you have games like multiple yeah. times a week, like could be that change in body composition. So making sure that you're still weight training or watching your carbs, if you are maybe a bench player or a, a backup player, you know, your nutrition is going to look very different than a starter. Yeah. hundred percent. And I, that's one of the things that I really try to emphasize is don't compare your nutrition to your teammate. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. You know, you can all go to Olive Garden <laughs> yeah. the day before, but it's okay if your teammate's plate looks different than your plate. Right. Absolutely. And the amount you're eating, the quantity, the quality, you know, it's okay. Like your goals are going to be different. Like how your body uses that fuel is going to be different. How they digest it is going to be different. Like one person may not be able to tolerate chicken Alfredo. And one person's <laughs> like, I thrive off chicken Alfredo, you yeah. know, like, <laughs> I so mean, that goes back you to know, your point too, as far yeah. as, uh, even the, we're, we're, we're big in dance world. I, I married one, she coaches a dance team. Um, and we love dance world, but I mean, we get into the mental side mm -hmm. of this too. Like this has a huge mental component yeah. because that is a standard in a lot of this society's diet anyway. Um, and if some of them, you know, if some of them want to lose weight or they want to change mm -hmm. their physique, they are so majority of the time I would almost assume that it's very carb heavy, mm -hmm. <laughs> even like your Starbucks, it, it's sugar heavy, mm -hmm. you know, the, the things that they eat, the quick stuff that they eat. And it's like, you can still eat, right? You don't have to just not eat. It's just, we have to change what, yeah. the, like you're saying, what the plate looks like, because if you're not going into that, that aerobic style and burning all of that and utilizing that portion of the gas tank, that was really the, the adverse effect mm -hmm. is, you know, you're going to start 
putting on weight that maybe you don't want to because mm -hmm. what you're hearing that looks super cool on on Instagram and Facebook and all these reels it's like oh yeah carb load eat it up and they're making it look cool and it's like you don't know their whole story so don't judge your chapter against their book and then they get frustrated with like oh I'm putting on weight or I can't cut weight or I don't look the way I want mm -hmm. to it needs to it just needs to shift and this is so important so I'm glad I mean that's exactly where I was coming from with that yeah. and I think everybody needs to hear that yeah, especially those sports um, like swim and dive, dance, gymnastics that are very, though those sports tend to be a little bit more focused on body composition and body image too. Mm -hmm. And um, working with those athletes, communicating with those athletes um, is a little bit different than the others in a general sense, sure. right? Like, so, you know, making sure they understand like, Yes, we need carbohydrates to fuel. Yes, Starbucks has carbohydrates in it, but it's not the optimal right. fuel. And why is that? And I can tell you why, you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, I mean, working with every athlete is just so unique. Their mindset around nutrition is different. Um, what they're seeing on social media mm -hmm. is really influential to them. They're like sponges. And, um, a lot of times their home life too, like now a days parents are, typically in their late thirties, early forties, like for high school, um, students, but you know, they're the diet trends that those parents grew up with mm -hmm. were very, are very different yeah. than now even, right? Like, I mean, my mom, you know, she was like one of the first ones that went through Weight Watchers, right? Like, so that's kind of what's ingrained in her head and that diet trend. So making sure like, okay, what are you hearing around at home? What are your coaches saying to you, you know, about nutrition and mm -hmm. performance? And, you know, kind of let me tell you, like, if, I, you know, you don't want to be like, oh, they're right or they're wrong, but let's try to alter it to, so it's personalized for you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I want to go back to, you said us a little, a little while ago, but like things that do end at nine and 10 o'clock, like you have to eat after, like you, you posted the other day, like you have to fuel. It doesn't matter if you're not supposed to eat after said time. So I want to dive in. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, we see that a lot with, um, travel ball, right. Mm -hmm. They're ending a game and having to travel home a long ways hockey because of ice rink times, okay. it, they end very late typically. Um, and you know, ideally, you know, there are a lot of barriers that we see mm -hmm. when, um, practice and competition ends late when someone should be going to bed, right. especially, uh, reduced appetite. They're not hungry, right. They're just endure like, you know, a couple hours of really strenuous activity and they're not hungry, but, and they just want to go to bed. Right. And I get that, but you know, what can we fuel them with what carbohydrates and protein, especially that protein, can we fuel them with so that they can recover adequately before going to bed. Right. And a lot of times, especially like nine and 10 o'clock, that makes it really, really hard. So that, um, I probably focus mostly on liquid. Um, so trying to do, um, because it is easy on the stomach. A lot of times students with a low appetite, they can tolerate that too, mm -hmm. even after strenuous activity. Um, so, and sometimes like that is an, a time that I would suggest a, a way protein supplement of some sort or a ready to drink like an RTD something, um, just so that trying to encourage them to get some sort of calories in and, um, before that they go to bed. I mean, some, but some athletes can have a full meal. And if you can, like, I would recommend having a meal of some sort, or even if it's a small meal, right? Like, even if it's just, um, a peanut butter and jelly with your whey protein, right? Like even if you can get some sort of calories in to replenish what was used during that workout, mm -hmm. um, that is I better than nothing. Yeah. So yeah, that time frame is so hard. Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of times we're focusing more on fueling um during the day. Um, and thankfully too, you know, there's more been more and more research that has come out that talks about, um, recovery, like nutrition and recovery strategies. Um, 
you know, a lot of times we still hear, oh, you want to have a recovery, something within 60 minutes, um, which I definitely recommend. But what we're seeing is that the true like recovery time is 24 to 48 hours after, um, which is great because then you have a lot more time to adequately fuel, um, and replenish and make sure you're, especially the muscle protein synthesis piece of it is like, it's trying it, that synthesis is building for over 24 hours. So, which is a good thing. So then you have more time to recover and benefit from, you know, adequate nutrition. Yeah. Yeah. Well, since we're, since we're going through that topic, you, you, you segued right into, let's talk about the supplement side of things, Yeah, but yeah. you already brought up whey, mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm. and I'm not, I'm not going to bias anything. I, I, there's time and place for everything. I tell everybody that mm-hmm. there's a time and place. You just got to f- understand and be educated on mm-hmm. what's the time and what's the place. Um, but another few key phrases is whey protein. Isolate, mm-hmm. um, creatine. Um, let's kind of go through those because I mean, I can go through clinically some of the things, you know, that they need to know, but I want you to speak on that yeah. as far as the, the way the isolates, the, the creatine, some of the big buzz things that they need to know on when that might be important. And we don't have to dive wholly into this because like you said, everything's dynamic within each person, but what is mm-hmm. the foundation piece? Because sometimes I have to kind of talk to some of these athletes. I'm like, Hey, here's why I know it looks cool. And they're taking this and Arnold Schwarzenegger took that. And this guy's taking this and promoting that. And, you know, Juju over here is sponsored by that. And it's your favorite player. Like, Mm -hmm. get it. Yeah. But those are some of the key things. Let's, let's kind of go ahead and dive into some of these on the supplement side. Yeah. I love what you said a while back too, is that like the focus should be on food first, Mm -hmm. right? Like that, that's going to be the focus. Like you'll never hear me recommend any sort of supplement in a first session with an athlete. Like I want to dive into their habits, their likes, their dislikes, what they're struggling with, et cetera. And over time then identify, okay, you would benefit from X, Y, or Z supplement. Um, so yeah, the big ones, um, are whey and creatine right now. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, whey has been out. I mean, both supplements have been out forever. Um, the research on whey is, um, very strong, um, and for that's been strong for a much longer time than creatine. So, um, and I will say with creatine, like that one, I, made sure that there was adequate research. I talked with colleagues before recommending it yeah. to athletes. I don't recommend it to all athletes. Mm-hmm. Um, there are some things that you want to identify with athletes before recommending creatine, you know, um, looking at health history, looking at like parents, what their health history is. Um, so I don't just recommend protein supplements off the bat protein or creatine supplements off the bat. Um, and then also diving into the certification piece of it. Is it a good quality product? Is it certified for sport? Um, most of these athletes in high school are not being drug tested. Right. But I do tell them like, if you are interested in college athletics, you could be drug tested, right? Mm -hmm. Like And if you're not taking a supplement that your athletic trainer knows about, that's not certified for sport, you are putting yourself at risk for, right. And, um, kind of working through that piece of it making sure going through the database and making sure, um, and the, uh, website of the supplements, making sure that they're high quality products, Mm -hmm. um, because the quality also like you're going to get the athletes going to get the most benefit from the product. If it's a high quality source yeah. too. Um, you know, I think like you said, nutrition first food first, making sure, um, when it comes to protein that they're getting, um, good quality sources of protein in, um, because what we see with whey is that it doesn't include all of the essential vitamins and minerals that one would need for muscle building and energy production. Mm -hmm. So it is a shortcut 
it's meant to be a shortcut, yeah. right? Like that's the purpose of it. So, um, you know, and making sure that around that protein supplement, they're still having a high quality diet that's being paired with that. Um, it, it is a liquid source. So a lot of athletes tend to like the convenience piece of it. And especially athletes that have trouble with, um, loss of appetite or just getting in some extra calories in, you know, finding ways to use whey protein to help them with get, gaining those extra calories throughout the day. Um, and then I would say just whey and creatine are the most popular ones I'm seeing. Yeah. Um, but with social media, the presence of, um, even NIL now with high or college athletes being paid to promote different products. Like it is pretty worrisome to yeah. me, like, because, you know, I had an athlete who didn't even disclose that they were taking a supplement for two months that I was working with them. Yeah. And I'm like, I was, you know, you're like caught off guard and they have access to it. Like, it's not like it's really regulated. It's not like they don't have access, like they can go to the store and buy it. Yep. And, um, it is like, if you look at websites, like they are very gimmicky and there's influencers and, um, sport influencers that are promoting these products. And from a professional standpoint, it's just so worrisome. Like, I mean, thankfully I have like athletes who can tell me kind of like, yeah. Oh, what's like the new thing? <laughs> so yeah. Sometimes I'm out of the loop, right? But like, like, okay, like give me the inside scoop of what's going on. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. So like well, unfortunately, it's nobody, nobody's gonna stick a mm -hmm. nobody's gonna stick a steak, a steak, a side of salmon, an avocado, and an egg in a blender and turn it into a liquid drink. Like it's just not gonna right. happen. Like we understand that. Um right. how we need to make sure, like you said, the, the sources that you're eating and, and making sure that they are food and you know the difference between like everybody's like, Oh yeah, I eat a lot of tilapia. It's like, oh well, here we go. Like there we go. <laughs> I get where you're going with that. Great idea. <laughs> Um, let me get you something better, like, <laughs> right. know, and making sure that they do have all the nutrients and where is it fed? And, you know, and we, with the lifestyle that we live, and I think a lot of us are going to, and people are looking for is, is the quality of production. Like we mm -hmm. have, you know, two thirds of a side of cow in our freezer. That's all grass fed. I know where it comes from. It's from a farm down home right. in Missouri. And, um, you know, where is the salmon coming mm -hmm. from? Oh, I bought a bag of salmon from Sam's and it's like, okay, better option than most. Would you be open to, uh, maybe even a yeah. better source of that? And, um, yeah you know, them understanding, cause then we don't need to go down that far yet. We can lay the foundation of this, but then understanding, mm -hmm. like you said, look at the database, no matter if it's a supplement mm -hmm. or if it is a food source, it's like, okay, you go to Sam, you go to Sam's to buy the, go to Sam's to buy the salmon. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, where did it come from? How was it raised? And those kinds of things, they are starting to matter more with yeah. how our food is being built. It's just crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about worrisome. I think too, with like the Netflix documentaries and all that, mm -hmm. that it's bringing more awareness to parents too. Like they're asking more questions and they're more interested in where their food comes from. Yeah. So let's, so then let's go through some, uh, if you can, if you want to, you can say, ah, I'll save that for my course or something. You're more than welcome <laughs> to say that as well, but, um, go through some, uh, do you have any, you know, kind of recommendations on some of the quick snack things, um, in the time crunches in the, in between classes in the hallways, you know, put this in your locker and that yeah. wall. Do you have any kind of simple recommendations or things that parents and student athletes can kind of hear? Yeah, I definitely, um, recommend going to like Sam's club or Costco or BJ's or whichever, or even Amazon has a lot of, um, items now that you can buy in bulk. Um, and I think having a combination of making sure you're getting, you know, those good snack, like a lot of times the snack items are like higher in carbohydrates, which are great, but, um, making sure you're also getting, foods that have some protein as well. So like my favorite is like a beef jerky stick, right? Like you can buy those in bulk Arch. and yeah. Yeah. Um, that's like one of my favorite things to snack on. And it's typically like, I think 10 or 12 grams of protein, you know, and making sure that then you can pair that with 
a bar of some sort, like a granola bar or, um, you know, fruit and nut bar or something like that. Um, I will say like the pro like higher protein options are harder to find, like just to not refrigerated. Right. right. But, um, that one t- tends to be my go-to recommendation for that. Um, we love applesauce pouches, fruit snacks. Um, and I would say these things are more of like, oh, you have like, 45 minutes before practice, like here's something to snack on, get some carbohydrates in you before practice. Um, but, uh, like trail mix packets or some sort of like almond cashew walnut mixes. Those are really good. Those tend to be higher in fat. So it's good for more of like a midday, um, snack, but, those are really great convenience products, really any sort of bar. I, um, try to find bars that are higher in protein. I don't know. It's more of a personal preference. I have difficulty with the taste of them yeah. and, um, but, um, like I just, they don't taste good to me, but, um, you know, if you can find a bar that's like 10 grams of protein, like that's a great option. Like, and that you can tolerate. Right. Right. And, um, yeah, I think, um, you know, fruits are hard to stock up, Yeah, but if you can stock them up at home and bring them every day, um, oranges are really good right now in season, bananas, um, apples are really good typically most of the year. Um, and just trying to get, um, when we are snacking throughout the day, trying to get that protein source as well as a carbohydrate source, um, always say like, okay, try to choose like two items that can be paired well together to make a good quality snack. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, try to choose a protein option and a carbohydrate option or like a fat option and a protein option or something like that. So, you know, things that you wouldn't be able to like really stock in your, um, locker, but Mm -hmm. you could maybe stock half of it is like, um, you bring yoga, a yogurt cup, but you already have the granola in your locker or something like that is, um, you know, kind of keeping things that you can pair well together. Um, and yeah. So for those of us in the Midwest too, uh, deer jerky. Yes. Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, Deirdre, I, yes. Okay. As you move towards the Northeast, there's still a lot of yeah. ground and you go way North, to get in there, but, <laughs> but there's a, so for, for, for those of you, for those city slickers out there, dear, <laughs> awesome. Um, I'm actually, yes. I, I was born in LA. Actually, I claim Cuba, Missouri. Oh. Uh, we moved here when I was young, but, uh, that's oh. what my snacks is, is yeah. venison. You get your deer snacks. And I used to do, oh, uh, um, avocados. Like I, in the morning I'd cut up an avocado and I'd put uh-huh. it in container and that would sit in my locker and I would eat yeah. snack sticks and avocados. Great source of fat, good, good fat, great source of protein. You can't really just yeah. stick a side of salmon in your locker and <laughs> expect expect it to keep it. Right. <laughs> I know. Oh. I know. The oh. protein the convenience protein Body. options are so hard yes. without having to like prep ahead of time and uh, or keep refrigerated. There on the Sam side of things, like we get, we, or I don't know if it's Sam's or Costco, but, um, Archer is a brand that we keep readily in the office, which is a much better option, a much cleaner option, not perfect, but a great source of protein. Yeah. They're, they have mini beef jerky sticks or they're like slim Jims, but clean. Yeah. Uh, They've got the big ones are like in a blue wrapper, blue, black and white wrapper. Great option for you parents. Yeah out there for sure yeah. yeah i'm trying now i can't remember oh i like chomps yes that's chomps the other one yeah yeah okay because i was like trying to imagine the ra- the rapper like yeah, chom- red, chomps red is rapper. typically my go-to yes same. like i love them they're yeah. so good same yep. yes, like slim like gym, but, <laughs> yeah like slim jim yeah slim jim but like a little healthier yeah. yes yes yeah. absolutely absolutely <laughs> No, that's, that's all good. And this is all information that we are starting to talk about more as our practice is shifting into that. Um, you know, and a lot of these, a lot of these kids making sure they are putting on good weight and, and knowing where the, where their, what their plate looks like, what yeah. their drinks look like, yeah. you know, the sports drink things like Gatorade, nothing against Gatorade, you know, it's always been the thing, but there's cleaner opportunities for that as well. Less high mm-hmm. sugar, added sugar dyes, um, mm-hmm body armor is becoming a much better option. 
Um, you know, but there's even better drinks than that. Um, like you said, the mm -hmm. liquid sources and we, yeah. we might want to just go ahead and jump into that real quick while we still have a little bit of time as far as the drinks. Yeah. You know, and this, I, this could kind of tie in, but the other like supplement that I just thought of was like, um, which I don't know, it depends on your ver like definition of supplement, but like caffeine or, um, like pre-workout is really yeah. popular with young athletes. And I'm like, don't take that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or like the caffeine drinks are really popular, like Celsius and Red Alani's, the Alani Celsius. Alani's. Yes. And I'm like, it's so hard with these athletes because you're like, yes, like caffeine is a proven source to improve performance. Yeah. However, the amount that you're intaking through these drinks exceeds levels mm -hmm. of what you should be intaking in like a day. Yeah. So the long, like I, there's a foundation that does a lot of, um, like caffeine supplement, um, research and provides a lot of resources for high school athletes. And so I follow them a lot and they are just huge advocates because they knew of a, a player that had passed away due to a like high caffeine intake. Yeah. And I, you know, because you never know, like, if an athlete has a undiagnosed heart condition mm -hmm. or anything else that's going on internally. And, um, it does just pose them as a risk, yeah. you know, it just poses a risk and you're like, okay, you're using that as your pre-workout instead of like a high quality nutrition source, right? Yeah. Like you're gonna, what, you know, we see with those pre-workouts and high caffeine sources is you're going to get that spike and you're going to drop mid practice, mm. mid competition, like, and how are you going to come back? Yeah. Right. Like, cause you weren't properly fueling leading up to it. So yeah, the caffeine is another really big, um, source of concern just because I feel like it's so popular on social media, post your yeah. Starbucks drink, post your this, that, it's you know, four, and yeah. yeah. Oh my God. We'll see for Oh yes. Yeah. And like, and then some of them are like have claims on them yep. of how they can improve sport performance. And you're like, no, like, yeah. uh. well, here's what I want people to know just on the clinical side. I'm going to put my doctor hat on for a second. I'm going to make it very <laughs> simple is you should be very concerned about what your athletes taking in or as an athlete you need to look at it because it's not cool to look cool when you're no longer here. Mm -hmm. because that is a thing and the effect that it does have on the heart kidneys and adrenal glands like if you as much caffeine as we take in as a culture now because of you know the red bull and it gives you wings and all this stuff and it looks cool and you think it's going to get you through class and it's like oh i just need to pick me up it's like no there's a nutritional deficit there that is or an underlying condition even if we want to go to the mm -hmm. severe side that for or, or because you're playing call of duty until 2 30 in the morning and waking up <laughs> class until seven like there's a <laughs> it's not a lack of caffeine problem for why you're not getting through your day let's have a bigger conversation we're not trying to get you we're not trying to get you away from the drinks right. that yes you might enjoy to drink we're trying to save your life and build you better and give you the opportunity to fix what it is instead of mm. just looking cool or taking in caffeine because you think that's the status quo and it's okay. Adrenal glands are affected very, very heavy by excess caffeine. Well, what do the adrenal glands provide? Well, they control cortisol, which controls blood pressure. Cortisol is good in small amounts. It's also a stress hormone, but it's good in small mm -hmm. amounts because it controls blood pressure. Um, mm -hmm. you know, there's the adrenal medulla, there's the adre adrenal cortex, there's a couple different areas of, of the adrenal glands. And if you damage that, you're talking testosterone, epinephrine, norepinephrine, like you're damaging these things and you're suppressing the adrenal glands so much. And now consistently it's like, oh yeah, I've been drinking C4 and I've been doing scoops like straight powder. And it's just like, I just want people to know what it is that they're, that that they are really getting into and what it's affecting because yeah. some of them do taste good you know i i go the guru route i enjoy that's kind of my soda replacement i haven't had soda in almost 20 years um i enjoy the flavor and it's okay we're not going to take away everything that you like it's like have a piece right. of cake go for yeah. it um however it's not a supplement it's it's just not yeah yes uh worrisome <laughs> <laughs> 
So sorry, I had to go. I had to get on a soapbox. Okay? I no, I appreciate it. I th- I think students and parents do need to hear that stuff for sure. I don't know how much you agree with that, uh, but I, I uh, you know that's no. I I mean I I think it's it is viewed like the caffeine piece is viewed. I think students are viewing it as a nutrition replacement Yeah. too. Like they're like, Oh, my snack is going to be an Alani. Right. Like my afternoon. Snack. And it's like, that's not nutrition, right? Like that's not going to fuel your performance. Here's here's one you thing. Know, they anyway, are, this thing, this just, I, I kind of live my life by one liners and I think I'm going to create one here in a second. If you, <laughs> <laughs> I'll fumble through it here maybe, but I'll try to get it out. If you're going to take a shortcut, in you're going to have a shortcut out Mm -hmm. period if all you're going to do is focus on shortcuts and cutting corners like one people see that like Mm -hmm. in actions oh i'm gonna take the shortcut it's like well you got to the end result but we didn't do all of this over here like yeah practice yeah you scored 30 points but you didn't show up to practice that's a problem eventually you're going to see the door but especially once the body knows that yeah it's like okay well if you're not going to give me everything else i need here comes the fire alarm. Right, Here's right. the symptoms because of what you've chose to do to take the shortcuts. Your shortcut in could, I'm not going to say it's not going to guarantee you. If you're going to take shortcuts in, you're creating a greater opportunity to have a real quick shortcut out. Right. Yep. And I actually see that a lot of times in um, some very specific cases, you know, especially athletes who are um, more body focused, body image focused, weight focused is that they're reducing their calories and they're seeing an increase in performance and they're doing great. Mm -hmm. But then if you wait until next season, they're struggling. Yeah. Right. So you took that short. So that's, they're seeing an increase in performance initially, Mm -hmm. but then over time, then they're not. And then they're seeing the injuries and then they're seeing, you know, so it kind of does apply to like, you know, that nutrition, you know, it does apply to that nutrition piece because they're taking a shortcut because they're not eating enough and they're not fueling their body, but they are seeing initial results. But then over time, go over why, like real quickly, kind of drop a carrot. You don't have to go through everything, but I think you can summarize it. If we're thinking the same thing, it shows performance very quickly, but then it drops off. Why get 30 here and and (laughs) leave them a carrot? Why is that? Oh man, I don't know if I have like a good scientific answer for you, but a lot of times it's just due to adrenaline. It's due to, um, you know, they're changing their nutrition, right? So they're going to see some benefit. They could see benefits initially from it. Um, they're seeing some weight loss and change in body composition. So they're seeing a benefit from that and, but then over time, so the problem is over time, like then they're slowly, this is kind of dramatic, but they're almost like slowly deteriorating, yeah. right? Like you're slowly deteriorating. So then, you know, next season you're going to, all of a sudden you have a lingering, you know, hip injury, right? Like, or you have a lingering knee injury or yeah. something that you can't necessarily quite pinpoint, but you pinpoint, but you're still keeping the same nutrition. Cause you're like, well, this worked last season. Why isn't it? Mm-hmm. and not working this season. So that, that long-term nutrition, like lack of nutrition mm-hmm. is where we, it, and that's sometimes where the athletes coming to like, well, what worked last season was great. Like I was performing well and now I'm not. And I'm like, well, unfortunately what you were doing last season isn't what I would recommend. The dynamics have changed. And, and you're, I mean, you're exactly right. That's exactly what I was looking for is the nutrition piece and the component, but then also mood spikes. And it's like, man, I'm cutting out. This is how I want to look. So then cortisol goes down you feel better about yourself. So you, now you have a a fake compliment to what you were looking for. And it's like, Oh, I feel like I'm getting everything I wanted. And then all of a sudden, because they've, you know, either cut calories or they've increased, you know, the body actually goes into fight or flight. So epinephrine mm-hmm. yes. up, then your body can use it as yeah. growth hormone precursors too. So it's like, Oh, I've got all this excess. Here's the long-term effect that, that she's getting to mm-hmm. is all you have to do is look at path of least resistance. Like if, mm-hmm. if there's a, if there's a door all the way, I do this at target and I opposite do it every time people will walk in the wrong side. It's like, we're not in London. We walk in the doors on the right side, but if the left doors open, you're going to walk through that one first. It's yeah. like, oh, 
pop it open. I'm just going to go. <laughs> here's, here's how the body works. Simple sugars first, then you've got your sugar carbs, and then you've got your, uh, your fat and then your protein. And as soon as you get what you want, that short term, you burn yeah. those, uh, those excess storages, the glycogens, the carbs, the sugars, then mm -hmm. you get through the fat. That's why, you know, the keto conversation, we're not going to go there. Good in a time and place for short periods of time. We don't need to go there. Mm -hmm. Your aerobic exercises burn a lot of, sh of uh, fat, which ends up burning fat as fuel. But then you start to drop off because you don't have enough sugar and carbs in your body. Right. You don't have enough fat content in your body. And then what happens, the deterioration portion is now I'm losing body mass and tone and I don't have the performance and my, my tendons, cartilage and ligaments are studying. And I'm talking really fast right now because I'm really excited. Uh, but then <laughs> you're burning through protein. Mm -hmm. And it's yeah. just, that's the end result. And you're like, holy crap, my performance is going down. I'm sore. I feel like, you know, like I'm more injury, like I'm having more issues. And it's like, so really just the summary you were, I mean, that's exactly where I thought you were going to go. That, so. Yeah. <laughs> that's slow. Yeah. The slow deterioration where you're not seeing it initially. Right. So, yep. Yeah. More scientific than I was. So appreciate oh, that. No. <laughs> no, he's, no. he's a nerd. It's all right. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah, just exciting it because I mean, and, and you, you having all that background too, is it's like, you know, we're the, and this is so important. What I want to talk about real quick is this is why we have people in our corner and we do podcasts with people like you, because here's the thing. It's not that, you know, I just went through all of that. And it's, you know, Caitlin knows that stuff, yeah. her perspective and how she, where she positions herself with clients and how she educates. It's like, that's what she's thinking. That's what she's mm -hmm. telling us. It's just in a different dynamic in education. It's, it's not that I knew that and she didn't. And, but you look at how she's explaining things. That's what, that's exactly what she was saying and getting to. And eventually she might have that conversation. I, you know, my perspective and what I get to and my background and my education, mm -hmm. I always think end result. I talked to that mm -hmm. at the parent teacher conferences today when I was going with my kids, <laughs> my kids are all, were obviously very much alike, but one is like exactly me. You can give me point A, then give me point Z. So I know what the heck I'm shooting for. I, two of my kids are like methodically cool. I, I kind of know what's where I'm headed here. Take me through it. A through Z. Me and my middle child are like, give me A, give me Z. I'll fill in in between. So I, what I just mm -hmm. did is I just jumped to Z. Like here, yeah, yeah. here's how the body's going to work. <laughs> so, but that's all things that, you know, we dive in with our clients and that she can dive in with her clients yeah. as we learn, meet them where they're at. What are they doing? Look at their plate. What are their goals? What do clinically we need to hold them accountable to on the health perspective? Mm -hmm. Because, but I think it's, I, I love what we've covered because we've gone through a lot of the buzz things and, but people need to know just that. Yeah. And I think that alone, mm -hmm. we've talked about today will help so many people. And I think is going to raise better questions to get better answers. I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> you guys are doing great work. I, when I initially came across your Instagram page too, yeah. I was like, so enticed by it because I have not seen a private facility that caters to athletes how you guys have well thank and, you and i was wondering I was like, yeah, and i and <laughs> i mean i've been in two physical locations but we know a lot of people in the sports world like across yeah. the country and um i i have not seen a facility like yours before. So, um, that's, it's really exciting to see where we are taking these youth athletes and that we're not just like, oh, they can do whatever they want. They're young. They're, you know, they'll, they'll bounce back and we are taking them seriously and mm -hmm. we are providing them with the tips and resources and the education to be a better athlete. But then even if they're not going on to the college level, like we're providing them with education on how to take care of their body. Yeah. Right. And health and all of that. And I just think that that's really great. And that we, sh you know, I mean, like I said, I think I told you off air, but like I wasn't, I was doing strength training two weeks before every, <laughs> every right. softball right. season. And it was, it was supposed to miraculously make me better. <laughs> right. Like, <laughs> But now we just have like a whole body approach and like looking at the whole athlete and a team approach with, you know, a dietitian, an athletic trainer, a chiropractor and like all of it. And I, and strength coaches, and I'm just loving seeing this sort of thing come to light in the high school setting, because, you know, I've been in, you know, my husband's in college athletics. So like, I see how they cater to the athletes and it's wonderful and it's great. And I'm just like, we need that for high school too. Yeah, absolutely. 
is there is there anything we didn't cover that you want want to jump on a soapbox about any uh, I've done multiple oh soapboxes. i have like a soapboxes. brief so i My have a soapbox brief soapbox. credits are out <laughs> no, that's okay. That's okay. I have a brief one. And, you know, I think this, it just ties back to the social media thing. Yeah. And because I know students are on their phone all the time, parents too are on the phone and they're getting um, information from social media. And I think that social media is such a great resource. Like I'm on Instagram, I'm trying to provide education to my athletes through a social media platform. Mm -hmm. But the one thing I did want to emphasize is who you're getting your information from. Yep. Is it a reliable, educated source? Yep. Um, you know, I mean, I follow some great chefs and cooks and moms who have great recipes, right? And that's so helpful for me for meal planning and gives me ideas. But when I'm seeing people provide sport performance, nutrition information, I'm immediately looking at their bio. I'm saying, mm -hmm. what credentials do they have yeah. to provide this information, you know, and just diving a little bit deeper. So really that's all I want to say to parents and athletes is second guess, do your research on who you're getting your information from. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I'm going to add the last piece to that is, um, Yes, they might look sexy and cute and and that's good. Like aesthetically, you can enjoy that. That's okay. Um, we're humans. That's 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 cool. Um, mm -hmm. I'm totally good with that. So, but just definitely do, you know, what you look like in the mirror doesn't define the health status that you have, mm -hmm. nor, you know, is it, you know, the greatest information. So enjoy how people look and let that motivate you in such a way where that's how you want to look in the mirror cool, go after that. But just because they're promoting something and saying that that's what helped them got, got them there. And maybe it did. What, what is the, the, what's the true education on that? And some of the stuff might be great, but like you said, just do the research, enjoy yeah. how they look. That's fine. That's cool. Enjoy yep. the lifts that they do. That's fine. That's cool. Just understand that you might have to do different lifts, different things in order to achieve that aesthetic. Right. Um, yeah. uh, or take different things and different quantities and maybe not take the supplements that they're taking right. because it's healthier for you not, but that doesn't mean you can't attain the goal. And that's the power of marketing, right? Sex sells, um, quick and easy, the shortcuts, um, people want to cut time, but don't confuse price with value. Mm -hmm. The stuff mm -hmm. that, you know, is typically more expensive to get the result you want in a healthier way. If you take the shortcut in, you're going to end up with a shortcut out and we just don't want that for anybody. So just keep them in, in my uncle used to tell me, keep them in their own file. Like if you like the way they look cool, go after that, but just understand that what they're promoting might not be the healthiest and that's okay. It's not a knock against them. They took their opportunity. That's cool. But just learn from that. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. And you know, I told you guys my <laughs> education background, right? And so yep. It's not like I'm just kind of doing whatever I want here and <laughs> making it up as I go along. So, uh, <laughs> well, you're a huge asset in this community too. Yeah. And I'm, I'm looking forward to having, having you in our corner, much like we hope that you'll have us in yours. And, um, I think we, uh, we'll definitely have opportunity to, to further this relationship. So if you ever come across highway 70, we're in the St. Louis area, <laughs> so we're not far. Or if we oh, come okay. Yeah. Town, or I guess Kelsey town, yeah. can't call it Taylor town. No. <laughs> we come towards Kansas city. I'm usually all over the country with some, with some guys racing. Where are you at in Kansas? Can I ask that? I'm in Lawrence at, we're at the university of Kansas or my husband's at the university of Kansas. So we're right here in Lawrence, just like an hour South of Kansas city. Oh yeah. So we're being in NASCAR world and dirt racing world. So, um, if I'm ever in that part of the part of the area. If I have some time, I'll definitely, uh, reach out. We, yeah. we can meet and have lunch, but, uh, yes. vice versa, I will have... in the St. Louis area or even Columbia. Uh, yeah, I, was I like, know yeah. there I say, yeah, uh, we, we've yeah. got a zoo graduate here. I'm not married to, to either side, so you can rock chalk all <laughs> <No>. you want. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. Um, I'll have to, now that I know you're into racing, I'll have to find a pot. I, uh, Listen to a podcast with, um, a dietitian who actually is a Na NASCAR dietitian and she oh. like helps fuel NASCAR drivers. And it was so interesting to me. That's I was it. like, yeah, absolutely. That is awesome. Like she, she said it was a really big learning curve for her because yeah. like you said, it, like 
race car drivers are athletes. Yeah. I a hundred percent agree. And like the challenges that she I had she gone it. through, just helping the, the drivers was so yeah. interesting. Yeah. One of our, well, a, a good, a good friend of mine, um, Ricky and I do know each other, but a good friend of mine, he's best friends with, uh, Ricky Stenhouse who run won the Daytona 500 last year. Sure. And another one of his friends is, is Kyle Larson, who won the championship a couple of years ago. So it's pretty cool to have that. So, but Rick, Ricky's a huge fitness guy. So it's like, I wonder oh, if he knows Rick, yeah. but that's, I'd love that. I'd love that. That'd yeah. be great. I'll have to find it. It's a little bit older, but I'll have to find it and share it with you. Cause yeah. it just was so interesting to listen to. I was like, cause you know, there are some of these, like, uh, like what we would think like odd ball sports, not like, you know, like race car yeah. driving. Like we wouldn't think that they would need a dietitian, right? Like right. rock climbing. Like now I know a dietitian that like specializes in rock climbing, you yeah. know, like stuff like that. That's just kind of cool. Like as these newer, um, hobbies become sports, you know, and we're just viewing them differently, you know, yeah. we're viewing them as athletes is like, Oh, this is really interesting. <laughs> so yeah. no, that'd be great. Yeah. Well, yeah. And I'll definitely to, um, I'll email you guys after and I can share. Um, so my online course is currently closed, but I am going to open up, open it up here shortly. I think what I'm going to do is kind of just have an open enrollment for it is like, there's not going to be like an open and closed situation. So, um, so whenever this podcast does come out or, um, I'll definitely share some referral codes with you guys and like discount codes. Um, and even if you have any athletes that want to work with me, I can provide them, um, with the discount, just if you, um, you know, if an athlete heard the podcast and they want to know more, yeah, yeah reach sure. out and no, yeah, we'll share that for sure. That's just what I was yeah. going to ask you. I was going to, I was just going to say, thank you. Thanks for, thanks again for coming on. Yeah. And if there's anything we can do for you or anything that you want to say as far as that, but there it is. Um, I think that's, that'll be a great asset. And yeah. uh, I think too, maybe we can collaborate more on some of those things coming forward, which will mm-hmm. be a lot of fun, but um, no, yeah. love that. That'd be great. Yeah. I think that would be a huge asset. Yeah. Yeah. I would say, um, definitely just highly recommend heading to my website, have a couple of free resources and it lists out all of my services. So it's just youth sports, nutrition.com. Um, obviously I'm on Instagram as well, youth.sports.nutrition, but, um, you know, it's just social media is hard. I struggle with it. <laughs> you and me both. Um, <laughs> We just learn as we go and hopefully we, hopefully people attach to it, but, um, we'll definitely collaborate on some posts going forward. This should come out in the next couple of weeks anyway, um, within the next couple of weeks, but we'll give you a heads up on that too. So, uh, we'll sign off for now. There could be always a part two opportunity (laughs) in the future, but thank you again. I think that was huge. I think we covered a lot of great information. So we did, um, we did enjoyed, make sure you subscribe, check Caitlin out. We'll see you.